Hi, my name is Dr. Charles Cobbs. I'm the director of the Ben and Catherine Ivey Center for Advanced Brain Tumor Treatment here in Seattle. And uh, this is a, another of our series of Brain Tumors 101 for braincancer.org website. Um, some of the most exciting research going on now in brain cancer is related to immunotherapy. Um, and there is a buzz in the world of cancer treatment because of the concept that you can activate the immune system uh, to take on a cancer cell. Um, what I should probably do is give a brief introduction to that concept uh, and then talk about some other things related to it, especially a thing called chimeric antigen receptor T cells or CAR T cells. Um, the best tumors for going after them with immune cells are melanomas. And why is that? That's because on a spectrum of the number of gene mutations tumors have, there are some low-grade tumors that have only a few mutations and then melanomas have a lot of mutations. And I think we kind of went over this previously and talked about the fact that the more abnormal mutations there are in a tumor cell, the more that tumor cell will uh, have its genes encode for proteins that are not normal and the more your immune system will see those proteins as not your own self uh, proteins and then the immune system will be triggered to attack anything that's not supposed to be there from birth. Um, the problem with immunotherapy in general is that most cancers uh, cannot be um, isolated from normal cells in terms of expressing proteins that are not normally there. For instance, epidermal growth factor receptor or EGFR is a protein which is on virtually every cell in your gut and every cell on your hair follicles and skin and it's a growth factor receptor that helps cells live. Uh, a lot of tumors have exceedingly high levels of amplified EGFR genes and there are thousands fold more EGFR receptors on those cells so the concept would be, wow, why don't we just go in and kill every cell that has EGFR overexpressed? Well, you can see if your gut cell has this much and the tumor cell has that much and your therapy has a, has a um, range of efficacy that big, then you're going to wipe out tumor cells maybe, but then you're going to have horrible side effects. So that's the inherent problem of designing an immunotherapy for a tumor. Now, since this is Brain Cancers 101, you know, everyone's always asking me, do you guys do genomic, genomic testing of your tumors? And unfortunately, despite the fact that um, we can sequence the genome of every glioblastoma, for instance, that we take care of, there are not many tumor-specific mutations. About 10 years ago, however, um, investigators at Duke University, Daryl Bigner and his colleagues, showed that on glioblastoma cells, whereas most cells produce a protein called EGFR that I just mentioned that is over expressed. Um, a specific subset of those tumor cells uh, had a mutated form of that EGFR where this part got deleted and so it's more shaped like this and they could design an immune antibody to that exact uh, shape on those tumor cells and they could tell the immune system to attack that shape and it's nowhere in the body except on those brain tumor cells. That was pretty exciting and that started a whole round of phase one clinical trials, phase two clinical trials. And uh, there was a lot of excitement because it appeared that these patients were living longer if you could vaccinate the patient against this specific protein that's only on brain tumor cells. Well, it turns out that if you take a glioblastoma, if you take a big tumor like this, and then you slice it and you take a little piece of it out and then you look at that under the microscope, you may have most of the tumor cells uh, are expressing this EGFR V3, it's called, because it's got a mutation called V3. Uh, maybe all the, most of the tumor cells are expressing that, but there are a few tumor cells in there that are getting along just fine without having that protein on them. So you treat the patient, <clears throat> unfortunately you can come back about a year later when the tumor comes back and then they saw that that tumor now, because your, your therapy didn't work, it no longer has those EGFR V3 mutations, but the whole tumor has been overwhelmed by these other cells that just could grow without it. So 
in the final analysis, that EGFR V3 immunotherapy vaccine study did not show efficacy. So that's not good. <clears throat> the immune system, as I mentioned, sometimes you can use antibodies or immune uh, um, proteins that attack a specific shape, but a lot of the most effective uh, treatments in the immune system are based on T cells, um, and that requires just a little bit of background. So um, basically, in broad terms, the immune system is divided into humoral, which is antibodies, and then cell-mediated, which is T-cells. And we have a whole sort of, uh, to use a football analogy, football team that you could consider the immune system. You have dendritic cells, which are kind of like the quarterback, and they tell you know, the receiver what's going to happen, and the receiver goes down and does its thing. And, and T-cells are kind of like the cells that are out surveying um, with the dendritic cells, some of the T cells, and they're finding things that are abnormal. For instance, let's say this cell over here has got an infection with a virus. They see this virus protein. They go that that dendritic cell gobbles up that cell. It tells the CD4 helper T cell, this virus is here. That CD4 cell expands and tells the CD8 killer T cell to go and kill any cells that have that virus protein on it. That's how your immune system works. And that takes a series of uh, steps, but once you've been exposed, you have these T cells roaming around your body forever, and that's why if you get a skin test for um, a PPD test, for instance, for, um, for tuberculosis, once you've been exposed to those proteins, you'll get a big welt on your arm where those T cells all come and attack it if they see it again. So that's how the immune system works. So some very clever people said, you know, let's say you have a tumor cell and you can find something that's unique to that tumor cell. For instance, there are, there are uh, blood-borne tumors on lymph lymphocytes that express um, certain, certain markers like CD19, for instance, which is a, a, a marker on the surface of these cancer cells from, B, from white blood cells. Well, what if you could say that mostly only these cells have this marker on them and you could create a T cell that would actually see that and destroy it. Well, how would you make a T cell do that? Well, we know that T cells can be trained to attack anything, uh, essentially. So let's say you've got an experiment and you have a T cell that builds a receptor on its surface that attacks that molecule. So this is a T cell. And what happens when you have a, a CD8 or killer T cell, CD8, is when this T cell binds to this thing in the, in the, with another marker here, it activates a pathway downstream here and it tells this T cell to then shoot into this uh, cell something called granzyme which will kill it. So this T cell can be trained to specifically target a molecule. What if you could say, hey I found one of these guys that works and I want to make a lot of them. Well you could actually take this molecule and you can design it so that you can have a virus have a gene that encodes for it. And this virus, you can then add on things in the inside that make this T cell go crazy when it sees this thing. And these are called interest, you know, cytoplasmic uh, changes. And this is what they've done. So they've created these T cells that are chimeric, which means made out of different parts of genes, antigen receptors because this is called an antigen here, and this is the receptor here. So these are chimeric antigen receptor T cells, or CAR T cells. And so if this is the cell membrane here, they've been designed so that they've got this outer thing that binds to the specific antigen, and then they've got these things they've added here to really soup up the internal you know activity of this T cell to make it really mad <laughs> and when these things bind in groups they can be expanded so let's say let's say you you design a virus that has this gene for this thing in it and you infect some T cells with that virus now the T cells are going to produce the gene from the virus that's in the T cells 
and that's going to make them make the stuff that's required to make this T-cell receptor that can go out here and then bind to the molecule of interest. So if you can do that and design your chimeric antigen T-cell receptor, there are ways to expand this so you can, let's say you get somebody's blood and you take one of their T-cells out of it, you stick the virus in there with the T-cell, the virus puts the gene for that specific receptor into that T-cell, then you grow up millions of these cells and then you give it back to the person. That's called adoptive T-cell immunotherapy. Let's say you uh, take somebody who has a lymphoma that expresses CD19 and you put in um, you know, 10 million of these cells that are super angry and souped up to attack that marker for CD19, then you can actually have it go in and just wipe out all those tumor cells. And that's what has been done and that's some of the preliminary excitement. Now, the problem is these might work so well that when you wipe something out, you're producing essentially what happens when you have a massive a storm of cell death in your body. You release all these dead cell proteins and your body reacts as if you've got the flu. And some of these people get extremely sick because all of a sudden they get fever and chills and everything that goes crazy. Um, another molecule that's expressed, for instance, on breast cancer cells is called HER2 NU and they've made uh, CAR T cells that go after HER2 NU and you know you can attack breast cancer cells with these. However, some of these, uh, some of the cells in your lungs, for instance, have HER2 new on them, and some of the patients have horrible pneumonia type symptoms. And some of the treatments for some of these lymphomas have led to weird things like brain inflammation because they cross react with anything that might also have that marker on it. So this, the field is in its um, infancy. However, these internal cellular activators have really advanced the field. But what we really need is, for instance, in glioblastoma, somebody needs to say, hey, here's a glioblastoma cell, and it's producing this protein that's only on glioblastoma, and it's on there 100% of the cells that's required for the cell to live, and it's not anywhere else in the body. And then if you had that, then you could produce CAR T cells, give them to the glioblastoma patient, wipe their tumor out. You might have a massive brain inflammation and swelling and they might die from that. Um, so there are all these things that have to be considered. Now, I mentioned EGFR V3 up here somewhere uh, as one of, the, um, one of the molecules that is often associated with glioblastomas and uh, is in about a third of glioblastoma tumors. And as a proof of principle, a group at the City of Hope in Los Angeles has made a um, CAR T cell, a CD8 T cell that has a receptor that binds to EGFR V3. And they published a paper in um, a journal called Science Translational Medicine where they showed they took 10 patients, I think, with tumors that had the EGFR V3. They treated them with the CD8 T cell by injecting it in their blood. The good news was it went through their bloodstream, went into their brain, and attacked these tumor cells that, uh, for glioblastoma that produce EGFRV3 on the surface. Um, however, just as in the case of the antibody immunotherapy treatment trial, it did not extend survival, but it did wipe out those cells. So it showed proof of principle that it could get in the bloodstream go across the blood-brain barrier, get into the tumor, and kill those cells. So now the, um, the charge, really, the, the call to action for anyone in this field is to see if you can help to find specific targets on tumor cells that can be targeted by this very elegant technology that will not have side effects on other cells throughout the body and that are specific for the tumor cells and that can be um, uh, knocked out without causing horrible side effects in that, that organ or another organ. Um, and then finally, you know, part of the mopping up process when you have an immune response is for other T cells to come in there, but a lot of the tumors, and brain tumors are no, uh, are no exception, will have um, this sort of environment where sort of like there's a force field out here that doesn't allow the immune cells to get in there. So why, so other CD8 T cells can't even get in the tumor 
because there's all these factors being produced to prevent the immune system. So some of these T cells don't get in because they have receptors on them like CTLA4 and PD-1. And if you've just watched TV every night, you see that there are ads now for Keytruda and all these drugs. They do nothing more than bind to these guys and block their function. These guys are suppressor um, these guys are suppressor molecules on the surface of these CD8 cells. So if you can knock these guys out with Keytruda and these other, other drugs that are being made available, these guys become more aggressive and then they can maybe penetrate this sort of cloud of immune suppression by the tumor. So a two-pronged attack with CAR T cells or antibodies and then these so-called checkpoint inhibitors inhibitors is, I didn't spell it right, inhibitors are where the uh, science is heading now. So I hope that that gives some clarity to this complicated field. Thank you.